Osman Tag, meow, and welcome to the Reader's Corner of premiere of Season 2. So, I thought I'd like to show you my very first book of the season to start off. It is a scientific book, and it is DK, Smithsonian Nature Guide, The Stars and Planets. The world is in your hands. And here's the side by DK... and published by Smithsonian Institution. Here's the back. So this is just a book that talks about those, pretty much the solar system. Planets, asteroids, moons, uh, constellations, things like that. And as you look through, it looks very bright and very colorful. And there's a picture of the sun. There's the picture of the moon. It's very detailed. It basically just talks about the moon as it was formed about 4.5 billion years ago, which collided with, with the Earth a long time ago when the Earth was premature. And it shows you the inside, basically the... Um, the dissection of the moon basically just shows its rocky mantle, crust of granite rock. That's pretty much the surface of the moon. As you continue, it shows the eclipses. What I really like about it, as they're discussing about the planet, it shows you the picture of the planet, and it shows you like a little map in order of where these planets lie in our solar system. And a profile diagram just t tells you about how uh, far it is away f far it is away from the Earth. How many Earth years does it take for Jupiter to go around the Sun, which is 11.86 Earth years? And talks uh, shows the relative size, how big Jupiter is compared to Earth, and you can tell that Jupiter is a very strong, very strong planet. To continue on further. Talks about Aurora Borealis, star sizes, which talks about low mass stars, path of sun like stars, and path of high mass stars. And as you continue further along, Talks about the constellations of the northern skies. Like that. And your zodiac signs are some major. Aries, which is my, uh, well, zodiac, of course. That's my sign, baby. And it talks about, what else, galaxy supernovas. This would be really good to use when you're uh, uh, stargazing. Just check it out. Like It's a very good handy book that tells you what to look for in the night sky. Certain galaxies that you can find in certain areas of the sky. But what I really don't understand is that not too long ago, a few years ago, I believe, that Pluto lost its status as a planet. And that's very shocking to me because... I don't know, I've learned Pluto so much in school, which is pretty much the ninth planet of our solar system, but now there's only eight. And from what I know is that, if my understanding is, if a planet has a stable orbit, it's considered a planet, but Pluto's orbit is kind of all over the place, and it's kind of not organized. Plus, normally the moon from a planet, like, the moon is smaller than the planet. Like, the planet is bigger. Well, the moons are really small, right? But for Pluto, Pluto's moon is a bit bigger than Pluto, which kind of would throw scientists off, but yeah. It's pretty weird. I was just shocked when I heard the news about that. I just, I was in su such in disbelief. So, anyways, DK, yeah? I mentioned before, like, 
from the first season that DK for the travel books was a very excellent book. Yeah, DK, they, they publish really good books, so it's very nice, it's very colorful, you know, very clear, just to show you how things are dissected in certain ways. It's just very easy to understand. Anyways, see ya. Bye.